So um, this is uh, work that I've done with uh, Stephanie and Elizabeth, as Martin has said, and also with Yue Ni, who is a student at um, Cornell, at Wild Cornell. And um, so it's a, essentially an implementation of the mini batch k-means algorithm. Um, so the idea was to uh, find a, a method that was fast uh, for clustering uh, thousands to millions of cells, possibly or most often in PCA space where data may actually fit in memory, but sometimes also for on-disk data, um, especially when we cluster the full data matrices, for example, as a um, step prior to normalization, where sometimes also speed is more important than accuracy. Um, obviously, this is based on k-means clustering, and this is just a one-slide recap of what k-means clustering aims to do, so to uh, sort of minimizing this within cluster sum of squares, uh, which in practice means having an iterative algorithm where you have uh, a two-step. First, you assign, uh, given a set of centroids, the observations to the closest centroid, and then you update um, with the new set of centroids for um, a new centroid for each cluster. So the mini batch k-means algorithm is a modification of, of k-means, which uses a small random subset for each at each iteration. These small random subsets are called mini batches, and so the advantages are that there's no need to store the whole data set in memory. At each iteration, we only need to compute the distances between these random subset and the k centroids. And um, uh, obviously, this makes it a, a natural candidate for clustering data there on disk. There are a couple of implementations already of this, um, of this method in the cluster R CRAN package and in the mini batch k-means function and in scikit-learn in Python. But both of, both of them don't really work on HDF5 uh, files as one would think. So they all store the whole matrix in memory or realize it in memory at some point. So we implemented um, our own package, which is called MBK means, builds upon cluster R because we took a lot of inspiration from it, but um, also, of course, on uh, BeachMat, Delayed Array, and, and HDF5 Array. It uh, essentially supports everything, every matrix type that BeachMat supports, and it provides wrappers for summarized experiment and single cell um, experiments. So, the idea is that k-means is very popular and especially is the building block of two uh, of the most popular uh, bioconductor packages um, for single cell clustering, cluster experiment and SC3. And so the idea is that in the future, these two packages could be scalable by uh, leveraging our implementation of the mini batch k-means. We have some preliminary uh, simulation um, benchmarks just essentially to uh, show that indeed with this uh, mini batch k means, you get to an accuracy that is comparable to um, k means when, when you start having like 5% of the data as, the, as your random mini batch. Um, and that is indeed uh, more uh, faster than, than the full k means, at least when the batch uh, size is small. Um, most importantly, is actually more scalable than k means. Uh, even uh, both when you uh, grow in the number of observations that you, know, you want to cluster and in the number of clusters, um, which, which is very um, promising. These benchmarks are actually based on in-memory uh, matrices because these are, are kind of smaller uh, matrices and we're still working on seeing what is the, 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 what the price we need to pay um, to, to actually read these mini batches from HDF5. What I did do was to run a full um, analysis of some of the pre preview data from the Human Cell Atlas using the uh, HCA data package that Federico uh, provided to the bioconductor. These are 378,000 cells. And I, I sort of um, ran a full, um, uh, a full uh, workflow, uh, essentially removing low quality uh, cells with SCADR. Um, Keep uh, run, filtering out some genes, uh, d um, doing scran normalization, and then PCA with random PCA using BioC singular, and then running mini batch k means on the uh, PCA space. And I uh, actually using mini batch k means also as a preliminary step for, for the scran normalization. So I essentially run mini batch k means once on the HDF5 matrix and once. Um, on on a uh, in-memory matrix, which is the the, the 
this, the PCA uh, matrix. And the whole thing, I, I was quite that. happy with it. it, takes uh, four and a half hours to complete. Um, the bottleneck is PCA uh, with two and a half hours uh, using random PCA on six cores. And um, the clustering itself is pretty fast. It takes 13 minutes for the clustering of the full 300,000 times 4,000 uh, 4, matrix um, and, and only 18 seconds when, once you're down to the first uh, 30 uh, PCs. And I didn't really spend any time in, in optimizing in these steps, so I'm not even sure if IRLBA would be faster than random PCA in this case. Um, and this is just to show that we have some um, biological meaningful clusters in this example. Um, just to, to one or two words on what we're doing next. Uh, we have um, this ongoing collaboration with Levi and, and Rosalba Junior to um, implementing other uh, clustering methods, uh, namely dbscan and Birch, and, and we want to compare with those, of course. We uh, want to uh, do some more benchmarking, um, especially in, in benchmarking what is the actual price of, of using HDF5 in this, in this mini batch k-means. So this is the, is the packages available on GitHub um, for now. Thanks. Thanks, Davide. That's great. Um, the next uh, speaker is uh, Mike Zhang, I think, who will uh, will be talking about uh, benchmarking uh, approaches.